In the question number 42, it has been asked about the transpiration and photosynthesis. So this is very much clear to all of you that the transpiration that is the loss of the water in the form of the water vapors as well as the photosynthesis that occurs during the daytime, both the processes can occur during the daytime. So let's say this is the stomatal pore. Yes, this is the stomatal pore, this is stomatal apparatus. So what happens when the water content, when the water content in the atmosphere is less, when the water content in the atmosphere is less, there is loss of water from the stomatal pore in the form of the water vapor. Water comes out because in the environment the water content is less. And at the same time, the carbon dioxide, it moves inside. The concentration of the carbon dioxide inside is less. So it moves from the higher concentration to the lower concentration area. It diffuses inside. So water comes out and the carbon dioxide diffuses inside both the processes they occur simultaneously during the daytime so we have to look for the right option here both processes can happen together right so this is the right option for the question number 42 that is the option number three right so let's move on to the next question here So question number 43, a complex of ribosome attached to a, a strand of RNA is known as. So let's say this is strand of RNA, to it there is attachment of several ribosome. Yes, what you call this complexes, this is known as a polysome, you can also call it as polyribosome. So the right answer here is option number 2. Right? So question 44, we have to look for the correct option with respect to the cropland ecosystem. So when we talk about the cropland ecosystem, it means so we are growing a single crop there. Yes, it's an artificial ecosystem. Single crop is grown there, right? When a single crop is grown there, it means the genetic diversity in such type of an ecosystem is less. So right option here is option number three. Right? So you have to keep this in mind when we talk about the artificial ecosystem, productivity is more, productivity is more, but the genetic diversity is less. So let's discuss question number 45 here. In the question number 45, we have to look for the main cause of extinction of plants and animals. So you know the main cause of the extinction of the plants and animals that is the habitat loss and fragmentation. This is the first main cause. Then the second one is over exploitation. Third one is alien species invasion. Fourth one is co-extinction. So out of these four, the main one is this habitat loss and fragmentation. So the right answer for this question is option number four. So let's move on to the question number 46. So in the 46 question, we have to talk about the photosynthetic ETS. Now due to the light energy, yes, electrons flow in the ETS. So due to the light energy, there's movement of the electrons. As the electrons move along with that, there is movement of the protons. Along with the movement of the electrons, now there's movement of the protons. Protons, they also move from where to where. Now the protons, they move from the stroma to the thylakoid lumen. Let's say, this is thylakoid, yes this is thylakoid. So the hydrogen ion from the stroma, yes they move into the thylakoid. 
lumen so the concentration of the hydrogen ions in the thylakoid lumen that would increase so the right answer for this question is option number three so let's move on to the next question